Hello. I'm Gene Hartthrob, Tom Rivlin. <laughs> uh, firstly, may I say uh, thank you all for coming out here today. It's really a privilege to be standing here in the uh, Great Hall of Imperial College. Eight months ago, I was sitting right over there taking the last exam of my physics degree. Uh, that exam was cosmology, which brings me nicely to what I want to talk to you about today, space. Throughout the eons, we have gazed at the stars and wondered, are we alone? Today, we are actively searching, and with the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, the Kepler mission, and the various selfie-taking Mars rovers, um, it's only a matter of time before we find something. So, should we be worried? Consider again the Arthur C. Clarke quote I began with. Why is the idea of alien life terrifying? Well, if we want to imagine what first contact with aliens might look like, we should consider first contact between peoples from our own history. And, well, generally speaking, uh, they don't go well. Um, and that's between different groups of humans. Uh, our own fiction, of course, is also replete with examples of first contact with aliens not going so well. <laughs> uh, it is my belief that these uh, fiction... <laughs> It is, yeah, keep going, yeah, go. <laughs> it is my belief that these fictions are the more realistic, with the uh, utopian Star Trek-like federations being the more uh, fantastical. Um, <laughs> the conclusion, in my opinion, is clear. Aliens must be actively kept away, unlike our, our keynote speaker who suggested that we invite them here for some strange reason. Um, here's how we do it. My proposal is an international, multidisciplinary collaboration called BOP, the Bugger Off Aliens Project. <laughs> it will involve the great scientific minds of the world and an endeavor which I say is vital to our continued survival as a species. We need to pool together our talents and resources uh, to create a vast array of radio transmitters, powerful enough to pierce the heavens, and with this array, send a message into the stars. We will focus a concentrated beam on the hundred or so closest stars to, uh, come on, <laughs> to uh, optimize the chances of an advanced civilization receiving our message. We'll also send the message to Mars, because, I mean, after all, after they uh, dried up their canals to power up their invisibility shield, we can't trust anything they're up to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those wily Martians. Uh, so, the contents of this message will be two items. Uh, first of all, will be... Uh, images showing uh, how hard we are, proof of how hard we are, in the form of threatening imagery from our civilization's most powerful weaponry, just in case they want to start something. Uh, you know. We'll also throw in some footage from some of our most triumphant fictional victories over aliens, <laughs> so that, independent of the day they receive the message, we will seem very intimidating. Yes. Uh, the second part of the message will be the phrase, of course, Bugger off, written in as many human languages as we, we can. It will be the job of the greatest linguists to work out ways to translate the phrase bugger off into lots of exotic languages, languages we can't even conceive of, languages like uh, binary and uh, Klingon and uh, American. Perhaps you remain unconvinced of one very important question. Why? Why go to all this trouble to deliberately aggravate aliens? Why even inform them of our existence? Well, assuming they don't already know of our existence due to our sloppy, leaky radio transmissions over the past century, uh, uh, it may seem foolish to deliberately aggravate an advanced civilization, um, which could be far more advanced possibly than our own. Uh, this is seemingly true, I grant that, but I've uh, considered the four possible scenarios, four, four possible outcomes of this. The first scenario, eh, <clears throat> excuse me, is the one that I uh, was thinking of when I first came up with this project. The first scenario is that the aliens are roughly as advanced as us, and they are sufficiently intimidated by how hard we are that they never come close to us, even once mastering interstellar travel themselves. This, of course, is the intended outcome, and I think we can all agree this is uh, the, the desired outcome. But of course, you know, I did consider other possible scenarios. For example, the second scenario is that the aliens are sli slightly, slightly more advanced than us, uh, but are fooled by our fictional alien conquests <laughs> into thinking that we are far more advanced than we actually are and never bother us. Again, this is a desired outcome. The third scenario 
is that uh, the aliens are far more advanced than us. Well, as I previously outlined, in this scenario, it doesn't really matter because they've already detected our alien signals and are definitely coming to destroy us. In this case, of course, we might as well tell them to bugger off as one last act of defiance before we are all annihilated. <laughs> Obviously, this is not a desired outcome, but you know, what can you do? Uh, <laughs> The fourth scenario is the one you're probably thinking of when you first heard this uh, seemingly outlandish idea. Uh, this is the one where the aliens are slightly more advanced than us and are uh, liberally and are, come on, antagonized by uh, our message. Well, see, I think this is actually the more interesting of the scenarios because in this case, uh, what will happen is they will come here, they will try to destroy us, we will overcome our differences, unite together as a species, band together to uh, defeat them, and then, of course, well, peace will be achieved through our unity against a common foe. One might even, like, one could even phrase this as saying there will become some kind of day where we become independent <laughs> of threats from extraterrestrials. It, uh, I don't know, I don't know about you, but this sounds like a pretty good deal to me. <laughs> yes, well, I leave you with one final thought to contemplate. If it's such a no-brainer idea, why has it not happened yet? Well, clearly, entrenched political powers have incentives <laughs> to not achieve world peace and are holding us back from goading an advanced alien civilization into the interstellar equivalent of a drunken pub rule. <laughs> well, to them, I say, shame on you. Uh, and to you, I say, thanks for listening.